Hey YouTube, this is Mo Fish the Anchor. Um, today I wanted to go over my Ocean Kayak Prowler. Tried it at 13. Um, had a few weeks now. Um, my first video uh, was shot with a very old camera, so I apologize for how that looked. Um, got my good HD camera here, I'll be using tonight. Um, so it does a lot better job. So let's get into it. And here it is. Get a better overview here. Um, this is pretty much what I showed you the other day when I was coming back from the lake. Uh, just a lot better quality footage, I hope. This is the trailer I got. Um, I found this in front of a an old house. I didn't even have a boat on it. The guy had sold the boat and motor years ago and told me he'd sell it to me for a hundred bucks, so I picked it up. Uh, I used to hold a 16-foot uh, John boat, and if you look at it, you can see I've made some fairly decent mods to it. Um, it's a lot narrower. I, uh, I cut 14 inches out of the axle uh, and narrowed it up. What I was originally building this trailer for was a uh, I was going to get a Hobie um, Pro Angler, but I, I just couldn't justify the price right now. Um, and plus, I still got a, little, a lot of good uh, paddling years left in me, I think. So, um, researched some more, and I settled on the Prowler 13. Uh, but just a few things I've done to the trailer. Uh, you guys might be interested in. Uh, these trailers are a dime a dozen. I mean, they're everywhere. People, there's a, there's a you know abandoned boat trailers or boat trailers that people just don't use anymore. At least here in Missouri, they're they're all over the place. Um, probably you guys uh, living on the coast can probably find a lot of them too. Um, this stuff here, this is called Unistrut. Um, it's actually um, used by commercial electricians, um, and what they use it for is they bolt it to uh, an exterior wall and you can hang electrical panels and stuff like that on it it's really strong really heavy gauge steel and just the way it's bent um, makes it a lot stronger yet uh, and it's got all these, all these holes or to mount various things uh, electrically speaking anyway um, and I was really able to use uh, most of the hardware that was already on the trailer I was able to reuse it like these uh, U-bolts and stuff, um, I was able to reuse all them. I did have to make these little brackets right here. And I had to do some extra drilling down in here to, to get this, the bolt to slide into here. Uh, the spacing was a little off on the, actually it was the other side, the other side I had to, had to do. So anyway, I, uh, these axles are simple. Uh, it's just a square tubing and the hub an axle assembly get down here and see it down in there is a just a square piece that goes in just an inch inch and a half uh, you just hammer it in there square the main thing is that you, you cut your your cut whenever you whenever you short, shorten the length of this tube you want that cut to be nice and square because you're gonna you're gonna remount the the hub that you've cut off so it has to be good and square in there and just re-weld it. Um, this trailer was already galvanized, um, a true galvanized trailer. Um, I just brightened it up a little bit. I got some uh, Rust-Oleum galvanizing spray and sprayed on it. Uh, I rewired it. Uh, new lights, backup lights, side marker lights. Um, and I put these uh, reflective stickers on both sides here got new tires on it just tried to make it nice again you know, just brought it back to life and I put some more reflective strips on the back here and that's about the trailer this is uh, your standard schedule 43 inch electrical conduit um, and I actually had like I said I had this built because I was gonna put a pro angler on it 
and from my research that I did on YouTube and the web was 10 inches on center uh, seemed to be what everybody was doing to line up with the scupper holes on a uh, pro angler and so I had had preset to 10 inches and it just so happens that it works out good for my uh, prowler uh, it's, it seems to be a really it likes to sit there it seems like uh, um, it seems like it's in the the strongest contact points it's hitting all the scuppers real good um, or, or near them which are of course the stronger strongest points of, of your kayak from top to bottom vertically speaking um, I'll go up here to the front and here again this is another shorter piece of unistrut um, same as the back and here you can actually see the fastening system um, that little piece in there is just a square lock nut and it's made for unistrut let me see if I can keep this in focus and get down here. It's got two little grooves in it that lock in these two lips right here and right here. Um, and that spring you see just keeps it in place. It pushes it up to keep it in place on those uh, tracks. And uh, drill your two holes, your larger hole to get your socket into, and then your smaller hole for your bolt, and um, thread it in cinches everything down and the really cool thing about using Unistrut on one of these trailers for a kayak is with this hardware it's totally adjustable you can adjust in or out on both ends um, as far as you can as far as your Unistrut will allow you and you can actually uh, cant your pipes to a certain point if you wanted to if for whatever reason you didn't want to run them perfectly parallel from front to back um, so you needed them wider in the back for whatever reason you could do that with Unistrut and like I said it's just I was able to reuse these U-bolts um, for uh, this Unistrut to put it back on uh, oh yeah one thing I'll point out up here see these uh, two fiberglass rods that I have uh, velcroed to the trailer what these are I got these at a farm center uh, they are uh, fiberglass fence post, and what they're designed for is uh, electric fence because they're not conductive. They don't conduct electricity, and uh, people can drive them into the ground, and you can cl uh, connect electric fencing to them. But the reason I have them is for, if you notice right here, we've got, I've got some more reflective tape. Uh, wrapped around them. The wrap didn't want to stay real well, so I ended up uh, super gluing it and it stayed real well. But on the back of my trailer, you see these little uh, wire keepers or cable keepers, whatever you want to call them. I've got pop riveted on the bottom and up here, and this is why they're there. That drops down like that. Notice it fits nice and snug in that top one. The bottom one is a smaller size, so it only can, can only go that far. Hits that taper, and that's it. And here you can see it stands about, let's see, I'm 5'9". It's almost as tall as I am. And what that's for is if you're, if you're backing your trailer up at night, you know, if you get in late and you're backing your trailer up at night to put your kayak on, um, you can see where your trailer's at. Um, it's going to stick up above the bed of your truck, um, over the tailgate of your SUV, your car, whatever. You're going to be able to see whenever you, your backup lights are going to reflect enough light off of this along with your brake lights. You're going to be able to see where your trailer's at so you're not going to get all jackknifed at night on a ramp trying to uh, relaunch. Or I'm sorry, trying to load. And like I said, those are just uh, four foot, uh, they look to be about a half inch diameter. They're just fiberglass rods. You can get them at most uh, farm centers, anywhere they have livestock supply or frigid supply. And you saw I just kept them up here. Uh, just keep them velcroed up here to the trailer and they ride real well.